welcome back to my channel. If you haven't been here before, my name is Angie and I'm a chemist who loves makeup. And today we are going to be talking about ColourPop's first mega palette they did with Kathleen Lights. It has 30 shades in it. We're going to talk about what I like about this palette because I do really like this palette. I was very excited for it because I love Kathleen. I really enjoy ColourPop's eyeshadows. And we are also going to talk about some of the issues and concerns I had with this palette. And we are going to talk about those First, this isn't just ColourPop that does this. A lot of brands do this, and I've seen very similar things. And basically, we're gonna talk about my issues with how they market this product. Did they have said on their website, five out of the 30 shades not for media I use. So that's pretty much an entire column. This was not something that I had a concern over. There's a lot of shades in this palette, and I don't always use all the shades anyway. If you look on their website and look at the ingredients, five of these shades, they claim, are not for immediate eye use. Two of these shades, opal and topaz, are because of the glitter in here. The glitter is not considered eye safe. And this is because it can fall on your eye, you know, it can scratch your eye, and there's a lot of glitters that aren't meant for the eyes, so when you use them, you use them at your own risk. Kathleen even mentioned this in her video. And then the other three shades I'm gonna talk about, Ruby, Garnet, and Sapphire, according to US FDA regulations, these also have to be labeled as not for immediate eye use. So the reason why they have to say that these three eyeshadows are not for immediate eye use is because they contain Red Lake 7. So in the US, Red Lake 7 is not allowed to be used in any eye makeup. It can be used in lip products, it can be used in blushes, you'll commonly find it in those, but you are not supposed to find it in something that's called an eyeshadow or, or an eyeliner, anything like that. This is not all red colorants. Carmine, and red 40 are considered eye safe. So those are two red colorants that are considered eye safe by the FDA. Colorants have to be FDA approved. That's one of the one things in cosmetics that is FDA approved is the colorants that go into them. So if you use red like seven in a powder, you can't call it an eyeshadow. You have to say it's not for immediate eye use. That's because whenever the FDA made this decision to allow red like seven, that there was not enough safety evidence shown that it would be okay for eye use. Lately, we've been seeing a lot of companies do this where they create a red eyeshadow, or they don't call it a red eyeshadow, they call it red pressed pigment. Pressed pigment seems to be like the go-to phrase. And this is usually because they want a carmine-free eyeshadow. Carmine is crushed beetles, that's not vegan, a lot of people are turned off by bugs, so this is usually used as a replacement. However, in the Kathleen and ColourPop palette, they do also include Carmine, so I'm wondering if it became more of a cost issue because I have eyeshadows similar to Ruby and Garnet. Maybe not exact, but close enough where you can avoid putting the Red 7 Lake in there and you won't have to put this disclaimer that it's not really okay for eye use. And a lot of people think this is because of staining. The staining is part of it. Realistically, the reason is because it can cause eye irritation for some people. Some people react badly to it and it will go away. But that was the decision they made at the time. Now, in Europe, they allow it for all cosmetic. This color is labeled as CI15850 and this could be interchangeable with Red Lake 6. They basically only differ by a sodium or a calcium. So when they ran the safety studies on the DNC number 6, it's considered the same thing to them in Europe that it did show that potential eye irritation could happen based on the you know, the animal studies and what they did. And this isn't the same for Red 40. So again, all red eyeshadows don't have the same effect on the eyes. But in the safety study in Europe, it did show that it was lower on the scale in terms of causing eye issues, and it did go away after ceasing use of this colorant. So that's kind of how the evidence lined up, and I think that's why there may have been a differing of opinion. So it is allowed in Europe, but in the US they'll just say, oh, not for immediate eye use. So this one does the same. My issue with this isn't actually that they are using this Red 7 Lake. Like I said, I don't have any issue with it and it is allowed in Europe, but it does feel very deceptive in terms of the marketing. And some companies are better than this than others because I have seen, you know, like independent brands like in their videos will say, hey, this shade isn't safe for eye use. But a lot of times these red powders these red shades, I don't want to call them eyeshadows because that's not what they're technically supposed to be called, but they're very much marketed 
as an eyeshadow. In promotional pictures, they're used on the eye. In, you know, in the, like in Kathleen's video, for instance, she goes through those three shades and specifically says where she likes to put them on the eye. I think she said she likes to put ruby on her lid, garnet on her crease, and sapphire on like the outer corner. Again, not everybody gets this, but some people do get it, and I think it's important that for those people, they are well informed of the risk. Like I said, in her video, she mentioned those two glitters were technically not eye safe, but she said nothing about the shadows containing the red colorant. When you buy something, because of the labeling act here in the US, they have to list the ingredients at a point where the customer is likely to purchase. Now when this was enacted, this meant on the packaging that you would buy in the store. The only exception would be if it was really small, like a concealer or something where they can't fit it. And there's usually, like if you go into like a drugstore, sometimes there'll be a little booklet like for like Maybelline or something that lists all of the ingredients for the products that they have there. ColourPop has always been really, really good about listing their ingredients online, which is great. That being said, based on the nature of this and based on there's like these warnings, when you receive the, when I received the package and I looked at the box, there are no ingredients on the box whatsoever and there's a lot of space on there. They're not doing anything like illegal. It does seem a little bit deceptive and they don't put it anywhere on the box. Instead, the weird thing to me was, instead of putting ingredients on this box, they put on the back of the packaging, the box, the outer box, they put all the shades, like their pattern. And they did the same on the palette. And this wouldn't really be that weird if the names weren't listed underneath all of the shades already, so it's kind of pointless to have a reference on the back when you already have a reference when you're looking at it directly. And it seems like they should have not done this and instead opted for putting in the ingredients on the back so people have that available to them, at least on the outer box. It seems a little bit deceptive. So the back of this palette only has in smaller letters than everything else and in a very small font, says not suitable for eye use, but they don't tell you which shades aren't suitable for eye use. So it seems like the whole palette is. If you'd watch Kathleen's video, you would just assume technically that means only those two glitter shades. And again, it was probably not gonna cause a reaction in like almost all people, but I feel like they are misleading you because they're not telling you that, hey, technically we can't call this an eyeshadow. Technically this isn't for your eyes. And that feels a little bit deceptive to me. So, and what they could have done if they don't want to put the ingredients on there for whatever reason. Anastasia Beverly Hills for their Riviera palette had some shadows like this that were like hot pink. But in their box for the palette, they actually included a little paper insert. And I thought this was actually really great and it told you specifically which shades were technically not eye safe. Viewing that gives the consumer all the information they need in order to decide for their own and the, that's the problem with this, is that people aren't being informed. If you market it like an eyeshadow palette where you show everything on the eyes, if you don't tell people, in an age where people want cosmetic companies to be transparent, this kind of thing feels deceptive to me. Even if the company itself doesn't think it's a safety issue, technically speaking it is a safety issue and they should be concerned about people's safety and give them all the information that they need. That's the only thing that gets me about this. And I don't think ColourPop's gonna care. We've done this for a really, really long time. But that being said, let's talk about the palette. This palette is really nice. It retailed for $39, which was a little bit pricier than I expected. And the pans were a little bit small, but I do really like it. Um, I like that the pans are actually smaller. We have so many palettes that come out all the time, and this is the first palette I've bought in a while, but I do actually appreciate a smaller pan. I would like it to be a little cheaper, but I appreciate the smaller pan because I can actually maybe use the eyeshadow up, and then I can go and buy another palette. And I love that the shades are listed on the front, and ColourPop shadows are just really, really good. I liked their powder eyeshadows for a long time. Their shimmers are really nice. I really like their mattes. They go on very pigmented. They blend out. Some of them, some of the shades were a little bit harder than others to blend out, but for the most part, as long as you don't have a heavy hand, you can get a good blend. I have it on the eyes today. I have like more of like the greenish shades. 
So usually if you watch my videos, I do kind of deep dive more into the ingredient side. I will leave a playlist up above if you want to check out some of those. I just did, I just felt it was important to kind of talk about the marketing aspect of this red sub because I think there's a lot of information that people aren't really sure why it's banned and that kind of, and I think we're all ingredient to doubt for today. So, but I will be back with more videos. Just make sure you click the subscribe button. And as always, I will link my resources down below and I'll even link this palette because I think it's a good palette despite what I just spoke on. So with that, I will see you in my next video. Bye!